we started to do what in this space is called tokenomics, like token economics, tokenomics. I do math. <laughs> What I do and what we do at Tao is we build economies and now more recently we manage economies. My name is Vlad, I'm from Romania, I'm from the city of Brasov, tiny, nice town in Transylvania. The whole idea behind Cypherpunk is to create a digital environment where um, economies and informations can move freely and outside of you know control of any uh, entity. There's a lot of people who are trying to build a legitimate decentralized economy that works well. And uh, that's what attracted me a lot. It's um, the tech that we have today, the maturity of the technology that we got to today allows to actually build actual financial infrastructure on top of it. It is the most meritocratic space to be in. Nobody cares where you come from. If you learn and you make a project, if it works, it works. You are only as good as the results that you can build on chain. Complexity of adaptive systems says that it's it's very hard to deduce from like one butterfly effect action at one point what the consequences might be. And this is applied in economics and especially applied in trading that it's, you can't really, you can't really uh, see one action and say, oh, for sure the economy is gonna answer like this or like that, because it's too many variables acting independently all at once. And unless you have access to all the information all at once, it's very hard to do. But what you can do and what you can fix is you can try to model it out and you can use statistics, which are on our end here, and you can deduce the probability of something happening. This is how we got intro to uh, machinations first, because Machinations was building games. I was working on a project that was a, a game studio that was trying to come on chain and have their economy. And they've built their XP stuff with Machinations. And I saw that first time then. And I was like, oh, this is very interesting. My first thought was, oh, wow, we, wait, we can actually use this for our, our, our own stuff. Well, it's a sandbox. You can actually create new interest rate mechanisms. You can actually recreate what a bank is. You can actually recreate what a asset management fund does. I'm a very visual learner, so whenever we build a new economy, we always want to visualize it, model it. We always want to build models so that the project understands what the inputs are in their economy, what are the what the main stakeholders are, and how uh, their resources would move. It's better to come to us like you do to an architect and not to a firefighter. It's better to model your economy out before, instead of screwing it up and then trying to fix it. The way you trade and what you trade always changes. Because people change, society changes, what, people, what supply and demand changes. I hope it's gonna be a lot more modular. I hope it's gonna be a lot more open. I hope it's gonna be, it'll be possible to have alternative decentralized economies that live next to the centralized ones. It's much easier to control people because we're all a lot more dependent on technology. You can push a button and stop somebody's economy. You can't really push a button and take somebody's cash or somebody's gold or somebody's Bitcoin. We were working in our earlier days at Tao uh, with a project, with a gaming project, and they showed us how they were building their um, XP and the resources, and they used the tool for machinations, and I looked at it, and they, the second I saw this stuff move, I was like, oh, we, we will use this. There's no, there's no other way. It's exactly what we do. And we used it for games and we used it for, we used it for decentralized finance. We used it for, we still use it to this day for whenever we build more complex economies. The tool got better and we can do, uh, we can do simulations with it. We modeled out an entire perpetual decentralized exchange. We modeled out the uh, swaps, how swaps happen without an order book. And we actually made it function with charts coming along. You can try to model it out and you can use statistics. Something that has an 80% chance of happening is you know, more knowledge of uh, consequence than something that has 10% uh, probability of happening. And this is how you can try and understand more complex systems and modeling them is the only way. Most of the world is definitely on a trend to be more centralized. There has to be an alternative to it. We should seriously think about having an alternative of a space, digital or otherwise, which can store some decentralized version of money, some decentralized version of data. And uh, one last thing to say at the end, own your home, own a garden and buy Bitcoin. <laughs>